The act of lighting a candle in honor of those who have passed is a century old tradition that allows us to express what we cannot communicate with words. By lighting a candle for our loved ones, we remember and honor their life and their memory. A single candle is a symbol of the human spirit and brings darkness into light. Welcome to Light Up a Life 2012. Thank you all so much for joining us. So happy to see a great crowd here tonight. And I also want to thank all of our partners who contributed to tonight's event. We tend to think that life is going to continue to be what it has always been, right? We, we think it's just going to continue on. And then we experience a significant loss. Somebody's gone from our life. And it feels like an emotional hurricane has just come through our life. It fills our soul with water. It threatens to disrupt everything in our life that we hold dear. So the staff at Hoffman Hospice, the volunteers, the founders of Hoffman Hospice, we understand this very well. We understand the struggles and the pain of loss. And so we've organized this, this time to kind of contribute, I guess, to calming that hurricane a little bit, a time of reflection, a time to think about the loss, a time to just consider and honor those people who have, who have had such a huge impact in our life. And so tonight, we will hear words of comfort, we'll light candles, we'll read names, we'll enjoy music, and we'll light the Christmas tree, all in an effort to show our love and to honor those who have had such a profound effect on us. With that in mind, it's now my pleasure to introduce to you our first speaker, Councilwoman Sandra Johnson. You know, I usually don't use notes because I like to speak from the heart and I like to relate to what we're talking about but it is a bit emotional for me of what was just expressed of losing a loved one so forgive me if I have to look down at times to read my notes tonight's event is titled light up a life and we've all had or have someone who did or does light up our life. And the person that lit up my life was my mother, Angela Volta. She had so much life about her. I can remember when I was a little girl and we lived in Chile. And she at the time when I was born knew, as I shared so many times, to give me the best life possible, we needed to live in the best country ever and that was the United States of America. She worked two to three jobs. And I always remember being a little girl when she came home. She would count her money, even her change, and she would put it in envelopes to save that money to bring us here to the United States of America. When we arrived here, she had so much life, happiness, and pride. One of the things that I always remember about her was her laugh. We would have our family gatherings, and keep in mind, my definition of family is about 50 plus people. We would have our family gatherings, playing our salsa music, a lot of good food, very loud atmosphere. But you knew when my mom was laughing. That was just an example of how much life she had in her heart and how much happiness and pride she had. Her work ethic was definitely something that I will always remember. She would maintain work here in the United States of America and would be so proud to work. To her, she always told me and my brother that it's not about the title. It's about the pride that you show when you work and giving it 110% and letting everyone know that you're there for a reason and you're there to make a difference for someone else. And that's what she always showed us. And she always was proud at whatever job she had. She would wake up at four in the morning all the time and I was always remembering how tired she must be, but she always did it with a smile, 
prayed in the morning to be thankful for even getting up that morning so that she could work to continue so that she could plant the seeds so that my brother and I could live the all-American dream. Her memories will always stay with me. Now, all the beautiful lessons that my mother has taught me. I am so blessed to have my children to be the light of my life so that I can teach them those lessons. So as we honor our loved ones tonight and celebrate their lives, let's keep their lessons alive, their laughs, their memories, and their light. You know, my husband, who's just been amazing throughout this journey, gave me a quote one day, and it truly helped me. And I want to share this quote with all of you and hopefully help others. And the quote is, we cannot always control our circumstances, but we can control our reactions to those circumstances. So let's continue to celebrate our loved ones every day by passing on hope, strength, and encouragement we receive from them to others. And with that, I'd like to say Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, God bless our loved ones, God bless all of you, and God bless America. Thank you very much. We're going to bring um, the, uh, the little girl from the movie you've been seeing here. It's a wonderful life. Um, probably no longer a little girl, but I'd like to welcome to the stage Miss Carolyn Grimes. I can't tell you how excited I am to be here tonight, and I feel like it's a privilege to be here and celebrate Light Up a Life with you. One of the first things I usually ask an audience is, how many of you have never seen <clears throat> It's a Wonderful Life? Oh my. Well, I didn't think I could do that because it's showing on the screen over there. I, well, OK. Because um, tonight I'm going to talk a little bit about the movie. And I'm also going to open a window into my life so that you might see a little bit of that as well. This film is timeless, and it continues to grow in popularity. It's the second favorite Christmas movie in the United Kingdom. Isn't that exciting? It's traveling all over the world. Now I'm getting emails and letters from people in the eastern countries, like Serbia and Poland, Russia and places like that. So it's incredible that this movie touches so many lives. We can all identify with George as he plunders through life, a man whose dreams never come true for himself. And he allows himself to be bitter and resentful, but it's in an honest way. He travels down a very dark path. He is on that path because he has values. And he has made choices that helped a lot of other people, even though he didn't know it at the time. Then his world crashes. It's, he's devastated. And he goes to the bridge with the full intent of taking his own life. Then he's rescued by Clarence the Angel, who had an IQ of a rabbit. But he got the job done. George has a chance to see what life would have been like if he had never been born. He got to see that he did make a difference. It has become a tradition to watch this film at Christmas, and some even watch it year-round. It, it's full of inspiration, and it gives us hope. In the segment of the film where there's a run on the bank, it was just on a minute ago, 
George is in his office and he is going to talk to the people. He pauses a moment and he looks up at the portrait of his father and under that portrait there's a needlepoint sampler. It's a sign sort of thing and it says, all you can take with you is that which you've given away. All you can take with you is that which you've given away. And then he goes out and gives his honeymoon money away. This was Frank Capra's, he was his genius, and he had all kinds of touches in the film, and this is one of them that I think is so meaningful. When we give of ourselves, this is truly a priceless gift. I was so fortunate to be picked for the part of Zuzu. I get to share Christmas with you in your homes. And when folks share with me that they watch this movie every Christmas, I already feel like I know them. They love this film and it provides a common bond. My mother started me in films when I was four years old. I did 16 movies. She was a stage mother. I had elocution lessons. I had dancing, singing, drama. I had it all. I was well prepared. I had already done these movies, and so when the movie came out, you know, I loved every bit of all this sort of thing. The movie was not a success. It was nominated for five Academy Awards. Anybody know how many it won? None. But it did get special mention for the making of the snow. Yes, the snow before It's a Wonderful Life had been made out of cornflakes, and they sprayed it with kind of a white chemical concoction. The problem was that when you stepped on it, it crunched. So they had to dub the voices over the crunching of the snow. Well, Frank Capra wanted silent snow. So he and his cronies got together, and they made up another solution. And the main ingredients were fomite, which you find in fire extinguishers, and ivory soap flakes. Do you remember those? So if you watch the movie really closely, you'll notice that sometimes, like on Clarence and George's face when they're in the water, there's this huge soap film all over their faces. And instead of snowflakes, you see soap flakes. So that's something that you can watch for when you watch the movie. No one knew that this movie would go on to become one of the most beloved films ever. Today I look back and I feel like I was a very lucky little girl to play that part of Zuzu. But perhaps there might have been a reason. My mother started getting sick when I was eight. She had early onset Alzheimer's, a dreadful disease. I watched her slip away each day for five years. Then when I was 14, she died. A year later, my father was killed in an automobile accident. So the court in Hollywood sent me to a little town in Missouri to live with my father's brother and his mean wife. It's a real deal, guys. <laughs> this woman was wicked. Oh. It was a huge culture shock for me. I'd gone to L.A. high school. There were 900 kids in my high school class. There were 800 people in this whole town. It was different. But you know, after a while, I started to realize that the people in this town were loving and kind. They supported me in everything I did. They gave me love and caring, and I was just amazed that there were people like that in this world. They helped me through that terrible time in my life. So I decided that I wouldn't go back to Hollywood and my aunt had cut all connection with any kind of friends I had in Hollywood anyway. And so I went to college and I became a medical techni technician. I did that for 20 years. I married, I had two daughters. Over the time, that didn't go too well, and uh, that was, we, we ended that in a divorce. 
Shortly after that, he was killed deer hunting. And that was hard, even though we weren't married, and it was especially hard on my two little girls. And then, later on, I married a man with three kids. I had the two little girls, he had three kids, and then we had two together. I raised seven kids for many, many years. I lived in the laundry room, the kitchen, and the car. <laughs> that was my life. And then, I guess uh, everything has to come to an end that's really good. My son was 18 years old, and he was the, the child that I had with my husband. I guess probably the most devastating thing in the world that can happen is to lose a son to suicide. And I did. He, um, he was 18 years old, and we had no idea. It came out of the blue. I cannot tell you the tremendous heartbreak that that caused all of us. I, you know, I just didn't see it coming. And uh, of course, afterwards, I went all over his life in detail, meticulously in my mind, and I saw the signs, I saw things, and I knew that I could have done better. But at the time, I just didn't see those things. So I carried this huge mantle of guilt for so long. And finally, I started writing letters to him. And that was my first healing experience. I wrote letter after letter telling him how much I loved him, how much I missed him, and how sorry I was. And you know, that made me feel better. It really did. I couldn't go out of the house for a long time. And I had some wonderful friends who'd go to the grocery store for me or do whatever needed to be done. And then finally, I was able to go out. But you know, the strangest thing happened. I looked for him everywhere. There's something about when you lose a loved one, you just can't wrap your mind around it that they're gone. And so I dealt with that for quite a little while. I missed him so much, yet I knew I had to heal. I had to get better, if not only for me, for my family. People would give me books to read. I couldn't focus long enough to read a book. The pain was so strong. It's physical pain. It hurts. And it just was more than I could handle. So with my wonderful friends, I started talking. And I talked and I talked and I talked about my pain. And I let myself cry. I let myself show my grief. Eventually, I was able to come to the realization that I would recover. I did a lot of volunteer work, and I helped others. I found the love that they gave to me was such a wonderful gift of healing. Then after 25 years of marriage, my husband left us after a grueling battle with cancer. He had lung cancer. I was the total caregiver for a year, and that was when I was introduced to hospice. Hospice came in and made my life bearable, and his as well. They, they showed me what I had to do for him and also for myself. I had to do things for myself. They taught me that I will survive and that when all is said and done, I will be a stronger person. I'm a stronger person. It is true. They were right. The holidays are wonderful for me. I give myself to the Christmas spirit. All my life I have felt that this is the time of year when I can help. Giving is the road to healing of yourself, of anything that you do. Giving is the road to healing. I have folks tell me that when they watch It's a Wonderful Life, it's like comfort food for the soul. It feels good. You cry, 
but it's a good cry. At the end of the film, we see that coming together as a community to help is a real blessing. We all have that community within our reach. All we have to do is reach out for it. And the time that I am remembering, that's a wonderful time. I want to always remember who I've lost. I always hang an ornament on the tree in memory of that person. I donate in their name. I don't ever want to forget them. In Seneca Falls, New York, a place that I feel Frank Capra got the idea for the design for Bedford Falls, we have an It's a Wonderful Life Festival, the second weekend of December. This weekend will be our 11th year. It lasts for three days. On the last day, Sunday, at 4 p.m., all the churches in the town ring their bells in memory of our lost ones. And that's when I let the tears fly because it's a special time that I remember my loved ones who I've lost. I believe I was chosen to be Zuzu for a reason. And, the, and that is to take the path that I have, perhaps to learn compassion. Because I meet many folks and they tell me their stories, and their pain and their grief. And there's comfort in knowing that someone else has been in their shoes and that it feel their grief as well. They understand where they are. There is comfort in that. I know the, about the waves of memories that wash over us during this time of year. I rejoice in those memories. We have a choice. We can choose to let the pain, the sadness, and the anger overtake us. Or we can choose to celebrate life, and that's my choice. I celebrate life. I enjoy it all. When George is on the bridge and begs God for his life back, in many ways his life was no different at that moment than it was that morning. But his character went from a place of fear, resentment, and anger to a place of acceptance and gratitude. This holiday season, I would just like to leave you with this thought. Be kind to yourself and give yourself permission to feel your feelings. If you feel sad, cry. It's okay. And believe it or not, it, feel, it, it, cleans, it cleanses the soul to let your feelings show. You just need to be yourself. You don't have to do the same things the same way every year. Start some new traditions. Reach out and help others. Be a volunteer. The rewards are so healing. And give thanks that you celebrate the lives of your lost loved ones. You know, my line in the movie, Daddy, teacher says, Every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. That's a famous line. You can put that in your life because a small gesture, like ringing a bell, says, I love you. I miss you. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. And may you have a blessed holiday season. One, two, three. <laughs>